Hi, I'm Tony Bellamy, and welcome to Just Cooler, where bebop meets hip hop and hip hop meets bebop, and the many flavors of jazz. On every show, we pay tribute to past jazz greats, innovators of the music. That musician is Sonny Rollins, AKA Saxophone Colossus, the great tenor. Why Saxophone Colossus? It was because of Sonny Rollins' long solos up to 15 to 20 minutes without pause. Sonny Rollins was born September 7, 1930, in Harlem during the Depression. Sonny was born to Caribbean parents Walter and Balboa Rollins from St. Croix. Sonny was the youngest of three children in a very devout spiritual family led by his mother, Balboa. If you were in the Rollins family, everyone was expected to have a love of music and strive to do better. Sonny was introduced to music by his parents at age nine when he started taking piano lessons. However, the young Rollins greatly admired Coleman Hawkins, the great jazz tenor saxophonist, who happened to live in Sugar Hill, where the Rollins family did as well. Sonny Rollins was introduced to jazz by his uncle, Reuben, listening to blues and R&B records. In 1942, at age 12, Sonny's mother brought him a used alto saxophone. Sonny took lessons but was mostly self-taught. Sonny began playing jazz at home and was met with some resistance because jazz wasn't acceptable in Sugar Hill. As Sonny developed in his teenage years, he had a love also for the streets, leaving affluent Sugar Hill for Central Harlem. It would become a problem. Sonny Rollins in his teens was in constant mischief, fights, doing drugs, and stealing. But this all changed when he met Thelonious Monk in the 1940s, who became his mentor. Monk developed Sonny's musicianship and constant rehearsals at his apartment. Monk then introduced Sonny to Minton's Playhouse and Bebop. It was at Minton sessions that Sonny experienced cutting, fierce competitions where it was a win or die situation. Sonny was a teenager and was winning most of these great cutting sessions. In 1947, Sonny Rollins graduates from high school and is well known in Sugar Hill as a top tenor in his teens. But it's not until 1949 Sonny gets his first professional gig, performing and recording with singer Lee Brown, AKA Babs Gonzalez. In the same year, 1949, Sonny then records with Bud Powell and Fats Navarro on two hard bop session albums. But there are two sides of Sonny, the thug side and the musician. In 1950, Sonny is arrested for armed robbery and serves 10 months on Rikers Island. When he was paroled, Sonny was now enlightened in God and his music. In the years between 1951 and 1953, Wiles records with Miles Davis, Charlie Parker, and Thelonious Monk. In the 1950s, a new movement of music was coming. It was called post bop or hard bop, and it was led by Sonny Rollins along with Miles Davis, Horace Silver, Clifford Brown, and Max Roach. The hard bop sound was R&B, gospel, funk, and blues. It was smoother and tight. Sonny Rollins' sound was distinct with tone, phrasing, and originality. He was the dominant force in the 1950s. And during this time, Sonny recorded Saxophone Colossus, Tenor Madness, Way Out West, and Nuke's Time. A side note, Sonny was called Nuke by his fellow musician because of his resemblance to the great Don Nukem, the great Brooklyn Dodger pitcher. Sonny Rollins was tall, brown, and handsome with jazz groupies everywhere he performed. It was now 1959 and Sonny Rollins wasn't happy with the jazz scene or his music because gigs had now become jobs. But most important, he wasn't getting royalties for tunes that he had composed. So Sonny Rollins drops out of the scene and decides to move to the Lower East Side, determined to improve his music, focus on his spirituality, Buddhism, and yoga. But Rollins needs a place to practice and decide that the Williamsburg Bridge, which is nearby, is perfect. Sonny Rollins practices every day on the bridge, Williamsburg Bridge, from 1959 to 1961, to his greatest audience ever, Mother Nature. In 1961, Sonny Rollins finally returns to the jazz scene and records the bridge and embraces the avant-garde and records live at the Village Vanguard, Our Man in Jazz. 
Sonny Rollins recorded numerous albums through the 1960s. Now's the Time, Sonny Meets Hawk, and Alfie, a movie soundtrack in 1966. In 1969 through 1971, at age 37, Sonny Rollins drops out of the music scene again and travels the world and visits Jamaica and India to study yoga and spirituality. In the late 1970s, Sonny Rollins switched from bop to pop music, recording with the Rolling Stones and attracting David Bowie, Donna Summer, and younger fans. The jazz world fans and critics went ballistic and were quite unhappy and wanted that old hard bop Rollins, but that ship had sailed. Now, I've just said some of the numerous highlights of Sonny Rollins' life, but not at all captured here. I can say he recorded 46 albums, 14 live albums, and stopped performing in 2012 because of poor health. Today, the saxophone colossus is alive and well. Yes, alive and well. Living upstate New York, meditating and practicing yoga. Now, let's get started with the music here on WJAZ on Just Cool, where hip-hop meets bebop. 